Hi, this is a tutorial on something I call the power chord accompaniment. Um, this is a technique that's primarily used by the left hand. You can use it with the right hand as well, but um, today we're going to be basically discussing how to use it in the left hand. This adds rhythmic interest to your accompaniment and also frees you up to be creating melodies with your right hand rather than being stuck playing chords all the time. You know, if you wanted to play like a little introduction to one of your songs or something like that. So the power chord is, is, is exactly what it sounds like if you know what a power chord is. It's derived from guitar language. When you play a power chord on guitar, it is whatever chord you're playing. It's the root, the fifth, and then an octave above the root. So it sounds like that. It's got a very like, you know, meaty sound to it. That's like where all of classic rock comes from. That's not how we're going to use it. Um, so what we're going to do with the power chord is uh, just use it rhythmically as like, yeah, we'll say we're in 4-4. Four, four. We're going through this chord progression, say we're doing like, I don't know, a one, two, four, so you're in C, D minor, and F, okay. Um, so then we're gonna, we're gonna find the, the root fifth and then the upper root of each of these. So in C major, it's gonna be C, our fifth is G, and then we just pop up to that next C, so it's just gonna be bum, bum, bum. So D minor, so our root is D, our fifth is A, and then our upper root is just gonna be B again. And then we go to F, So to start, we'll do uh, two quarter notes and a half notes. So it's like imagining that we're in 4-4. Four, four. Just adds a little bit thicker harmonies there and more rhythm. So yeah, that's what we're doing there. So that'd be one option. You take it through as quarter notes. And maybe you do the seesaw on the right hand. Then we could also do, I'll offer as the second option where we do eighth notes. So it would be like two eighth notes and then, you know, like a dotted half note. So it's just the same thing, I'm just changing the rhythm a little bit. And then once again, we could do the, we could do the seesaw with this too. Um, I could go through all the different possibilities with this, but it would just be kind of redundant because you can, you can basically do anything. It's, this is an, another accompaniment technique that has a lot of mileage out of it, uh, really just from changing the rhythm even, you know. So you could do this left hand, these three notes, and almost any rhythmic combination that you can imagine. Um, so you could do what we did there, we did like eighth notes, you could do it on every beat, you know, like kind of, kind of a cycle back and forth, that's another one. If you're like building a song or something like that, that might be, maybe that's effective there, you know what I mean? You could also do it where you just go back and forth between the top two, so it could be like, so it adds weight to that downbeat without like being too distracting, whatever. Um, you know, you could also do it where um, you, uh, you're going to go back and forth, you know, you just the top one, you can do the opposite, you can do the bottom one. So really a lot of options there rhythmically in the left hand. And then as I said, what's cool about that is you can do any of the right hand techniques that you know will go over top of almost any version of the power chord that you can think of. Um, but you can also play little melodies uh, over the top too. So if you wanted to do an introduction to your song, you could do, you know. And notice like that right there fills out the texture just fine, even with no other instruments playing. So it can do that in addition to just adding like a thickness and rhythmic texture to your uh, right hand playing. It can also kind of provide a nice solid base for you to do some solo playing with your right hand. So happy practicing, man.